What's going on, y'all? Look, let me tell you something. First of all, I apologize if this is a little late. First of all, a bitch had to work, okay? The last two weeks, my schedule got switched up a little bit. And so, therefore, that's why y'all got it early. It ain't going to be like that for the next couple of weeks or so. But fuck that. And then the Uber, Uber fucking tried it tonight, okay? This bitch rolled right past me. And I'm thinking that she finna turn around and realize that, hey, I rolled right past the bitch. Let me turn around. Bitch, six minutes later, I'm like, where the fuck this hoe at? She's sitting right there on the other side. I said, I know this bitch is not sitting in the back. But where the fuck she at? I had to text her and be like, you literally just rolled right past me. She ain't going to turn around. This bitch going to back back from wherever the fuck she was to make me walk down to the corner. I said, you know what? I am not a hoe, so I don't stand on corners, okay? So you will not do this shit. Then she opened up the door, and the whole fucking car smells nothing but fresh weed. I said, that's why the fuck your ass rolled right past me. Don't blame it on the navigation system. Blame it on your goddamn self. But, um, anyway, yes, I apologize, y'all. Um, let me calm down, okay? Let me get into character. That was just my night. You know, they be fucking trying it. As good as I am, bitch, get the fuck. So we start this episode off. I apologize. This is Love and Hip Hop Season 5, Atlanta, Episode 4, Blackmail, bitch. And the bitch is back, Jocelyn Hernandez, okay? Um, we started where we left off last week at the fight with Tommy, Tierra, and Scrap. Surprisingly, you know, Tommy nor Tierra is not here for this bullshit that Scrap is pulling, talking about some, you brought us both together to make it seem as if you want both of us to put money on your books to tell us about some damn plea deal that you finna do. Bitch, we ain't finna do that shit. I said, okay, y'all working on one accord on that front, but Tommy was like, fuck you, Scrap. Okay, you have fun with this jail stuff and um getting the course together, this child support and visitation because Tommy's not here for it. And, you know, he's still trying to get them to sit down and say, Scrap, you out your goddamn mind. Move, bitch! You know, that was... <laughs> Tommy! <laughs> she gets me every time. Like, she went through, like, 15 ranges of emotion. You know, she must have listened to Lemonade because, bitch, goddamn, I was just sitting here like, that's what it is. That's what it is. Did y'all see that? Beyonce was rolling through the town with a motherfucking bat, fucking shit up with a smile on her face. That was Tommy. Because Tommy sat there with a smile on her face for a second, and then it just changed to anger. Like, I was just like, God damn, move, bitch! And I said, I hear you, ho. I hear you. Moving on from that, we get Carly Red. <sighs> Carly Red and Life Genesis. See, Life Genesis, I don't understand. I mean, you was the shit when you came out because your story and all that stuff must be nice. You know, all that shit. <clears throat> and um, you stroking your guitar as soon as you got out of jail. You must have did a 10-year bid. You came out, got famous somehow, and I was liking all your shit. But then all of a sudden, you played yourself by getting on um, here. People still ain't finna buy your shit. I just want to know. I just want you to know that. We still not finna buy that shit. Um, these antics, I don't like when people that I like get on shows like this. I mean, I don't care if it's for attention or publicity to get your ass out there. I just don't like it because I lose kind of some type of respect for you. If you did not start off on this show, please don't get on this show, especially if I liked you. And Carly Red thinking she all that, you know, I just been doing it big. And, you know, I'm out here in L.A. checking on my store. And you know what else just happened, bitch? I got my own set. On Playboy. Yes, I am filming right here on Playboy. And my man, Life, you know, he's been there for me through thick and thin. And I'm just trying to get some me time with him. So, just for him to be with me, Carly Red, he spent 12 hours on set to get some quality time. Bitch, pause. If he there for 12 hours, you on set for 12 hours, where's the quality time coming in? Because he ain't spending all them 12 hours with you because you supposedly be working them 12 hours. I just wanted to know that that shit wasn't adding up. Um, he was just sitting there watching you. Like he said, you can pull them titties out for them, pull them titties out for me. I said, like, if you don't shut the fuck up. But they talking about shit and, you know, she mad about what's going on between her and Jocelyn. How Jocelyn, uh, I guess, trying to play her and all this shit. And I, I said, girl, give it up. Leave it alone. Then we get Jocelyn. The bitch is back. Okay? I said, girl, you know, we seen her titties before we saw her face. Literally. And so, you know, so we were supposed to be doing, uh, uh, what is it called? That time of the month, that in Hollywood. But, you know, for some tax reasons, 
Stevie wanted to come back to Atlanta. And I was like, you know, okay, Stevie, we can come back to Atlanta, but the only way that we can do that is if you got to bring me some jury. You know what I'm saying? And I'm cool with Mimi, and I'm cool with this, but, you know, I got to show these rats what it is. And I got something for everybody. And I said, all right, what you got? I mean, the title is called Blackmail, but, hey, it is what it is. So, basically, when Stevie told Stevie get us some jury and told her about Mimi, oh, Mimi got a girlfriend now, so she liked it when Jocelyn was down up in that pussy. She was like, you know what? I'm not even surprised because Mimi don't even know what it is that she want. But everybody got a little, want to lick a little something every now and then. And then I said, you know what? That's not necessarily true. But some lesbos think that way. Everybody want to lick something every now and then. No, they probably curious, but they don't want to go all the way there. So I'm going to correct you on that one. So basically she want to throw this little um, viewing party for her video church. I wrote it, I produced it, I directed it, I want to do all of this for them, and I wanted to uh, invite Mimi and her girlfriend, and I want to invite the rest too, and let them see what's going on. I said, all right, Jocelyn, you think you big shit. She's like, everybody up in Hollywood liked it. I said, who? Who? Bitch, the owl says who? Y'all remember the owl on the Tootsie Roll? How many licks? One. <laughs> let me stop. I just said, girl, who? She was like, now nah, I got to see a man. So, girl, sit your ass all the way down. And then go talk about, you know, seeing, inviting Karen King and her sons and um, talking about Tommy. And, uh, you know, Stevie has to put it that that scrap came in there to talk to her about, talk to him about the situation that he was going through. And then she was like, Tommy, you know, she need to um, cool her jets because she need somebody to bring her back down to earth because she thinks she the queen. Uh-uh. I used to think I was a bad bitch, but no, I'm the bad bitch right now. I said, Jocelyn, okay. I said, from right then and there, it sound like you really don't fuck with the girl the way that the girl fuck with you. So, but a lot of shit that everybody been saying is kind of true, you know? Hmm. So, um, Rashida was getting a staff meeting together because it's not so simple and not so easy having your family and friends work for you. And so, they waiting for, um, Kirk's daughter to get there. And this bitch shows up late. I had a three-year-old to take care of. You don't know what that's like. You don't this and you don't that. Oh, don't talk to me like that because I don't have to respect. No, respect my elders. You don't pay me. You don't pay me. You don't pay me. She was going off on me, Charlene, and everybody else in the, in, the, in the store. And at this moment, I was like, Rashida, you let this bitch talk to your mama like that? I don't give a damn if that's your stepdaughter or not. You slap that bitch up because you ain't. And Miss Charlene, you, you ran over Kirk's bite, but you're going to let this little bitch who's sitting right here bag you Speak to you that way. Oh, okay. You know, I see how this TV, sh made for TV shit is. Because it wouldn't go down like that in my household. You're going to show some goddamn respect, okay? And then here come Kurt. Uh, she was like, I'm not pressed to be working at press. I'm only here because I need to pay my bills, you know. Pay my bills, provide for my daughter. And, um, to, uh, you know, put food on the table and stuff like that. I am an artist, and I be watching my dad up in his music industry, and he's standing all these motherfuckers instead of not standing me. Like, I want to be the one to carry on the false name. Girl, don't nobody give a shit. He don't give a shit, and we don't give a shit. That just irked the fuck out of me. They going to give her a chance, but bitch, they was like, show the fuck up on time, okay? Rashida said, no, you just come early, okay? I was like, get out of here with that. Then, you know, Jessica Dime meet up with Mimi. Uh, she was like, she just wanted to clear the air because, you know, her and Mimi, they in a good place now and she don't want to mess that up. And so she was apologizing for what happened at the party. And she was like, girl, that wasn't me. Uh, Carly came with them two real hood rats, but you know, shit happens. And she was like, so I heard, um, you know, Stevie is in town and, you know, of course, Jocelyn is back too. And then it was like, uh-uh, fuck that bitch. That's a fake ass bitch right there. I just, uh-uh. She was like, you know, stranger things have happened. And um, it's like, me and Jocelyn, we're like really cool right now. And I said, oh, okay. Me and Jessica was looking like, whatever, what that's supposed to mean. Jessica said, well, damn, did you tell Chris about Stevie? You know what? I haven't gotten around to it. <laughs> I said, well, don't you think you want to, bitch? <laughs> so, you know, Jessica was like, to to make shit up, she was like, I want to, um, um, want you to meet somebody. Girl, all of a sudden, here comes Tierra. Mimi was like, the fuck? I said, <laughs> the fuck to it. Because I, I straight up thought it was Erica Dixon at first. I was like, they, these people at certain angles, they look like everybody else. I don't get it. So, Mimi... <sighs> And Tiara, they just made up and all this stuff. She was like, bitch, I know this whole damn brain is. <laughs> Hold on. 
Because it was so funny to me. I said, why is everybody a hood rat? This hood rat bitch. She brought this hood rat. I said, yes, Mimi, she brought her. But it wasn't her fault, okay? It wasn't her fault, girl. So, Tierra was basically like, because Mimi was like, damn, we didn't even get a chance to cut the goddamn cake or whatever. You know, I'm off my game with these impressions tonight. I'm just pissed off. Uber fucked me up. Damn, just fucked me up. Like, I be hating when shit happen like that. But y'all forgive me. Um, anyway... And I appreciate all the love y'all be showing on my videos. Y'all, y'all riders. <laughs> I can't wait to see most of y'all that's coming to the blackout. Atlanta, July 15th to the 16th. $25, sweet and greasy at gmail.com. Get your tickets, bitches, okay? We're going to have a bomb ass time. But um, anyway, yeah, so she was basically like, I really did come down here just to, find, uh, to get some friends. I ain't know what the fuck I was stepping into. And Tierra had to explain, like, girl... I was invited. That was my first time I ever heard the shit that was going on at your party. That's when I found out about Tommy and all this shit. And, you know, I've been talking with Karen. Like, the family don't even like me. Hold on. I don't want to Like, they don't like me. Like, I just don't get it. And it's like, I don't even want my son around him. They was like, you know what? You can't do that. Because, listen, I went through the same thing with Eva and Stevie. But what I would never do, I would never keep my child away from their father. All right, you know, and the grandmother, you know, grandmothers, they love their kids. I was like, okay, you know, y'all spending some shit. And let me tell you something. It is a cold day in hell when I'm listening and looking at Jessica Dad piece like, bitch, you saying some stuff that I'm listening to? Like, girl, that's some right information. What the fuck is going on? Shit is reversed, you know? And so they talked about that, yada, yada, yada. Then we get into this shit with Jocelyn. Jocelyn think that she is the queen bitch. Okay, well, she probably is on this show, you know. And she basically, what her role is to come down here and to start some shit, all right? Because that's all she been doing. She want to put Tommy in her place. And it feels like she's playing all sides because she's going to make it feel like to Tommy that I'm really here for you, but in the confessionals, she really want to fuck shit up. Like, she don't give a fuck who gets mad because she's talking mad shit about Tommy in the confession. Like, I got some stuff to be dropping in her lap and all this stuff. And what she going to do with it ain't my concern. But, bitch, we're going to see how much of a real bitch she is. You out here acting ratchet and, you know, fighting this and that. But you're supposed to be a lady and all this stuff. And I'm sitting here like, Jocelyn, well, do you really like the bitch? Do you really like her? You know, so Tommy explaining to her what's going on. And, you know, Jocelyn talking about something. I'm going to invite everybody to the party. You know, because we have to evolve. We have to, you know, show that we can be classy and ladylike without all this fighting and hair pulling. And I said, Jocelyn, what? She said, bitch, I used to do that. I said, you evolve. <laughs> Quit lying. Because she was, because Tommy got mad at them. He was like, I don't want that piglet bitch there. She was like, girl, who? That dime bitch. Because that bitch kept on talking all this shit about you. Oh, you don't know her like this. And you don't know her this and all this stuff. And then Carly Red wanted to say stuff. And it was like, so these bitches still harping on the past and stuff. I got to put this to um to rest and all this shit. So, next thing you know, Jocelyn was like, um, come to find out, Scrap got another bitch, okay? He's shacked up with another bitch and it ain't the baby mama and it ain't you. And the only reason that I found out about this is because as soon as I got to ATL, my girlfriend, you know, she's told me, okay? And she the real deal. I said, how you know the bitch ain't lying? Just because you think she the real deal, that don't mean that she lying. Ain't lying. Girl, I was like, okay, Jocelyn, Jocelyn, you are trying to take Carly Red's job and starting the mess. I see what you're doing. Then gonna say, so I hold Tommy. Let's see, can Tommy walk out of here like a lady? Girl. So we finally get to see K. Michelle, okay? K. Michelle is in L.A. Carly was like, so even though I'm out here doing this stuff for Playboy, I had to check on my store. And um, I told my girl K that I was going to be out here. And guess what? She showed up. So K come up in there. I ain't like K look in her confessionals, though. I'm, I'm going to be I'm gonna be honest. That really, I wasn't really feeling that, okay? Uh, it looked like she was wearing somebody's curtain, somebody's drapery or whatever, her grandma's drapery or something. I don't know. But, you know... She was talking to her. She was like, hey, girl, how you been? You out there in London and all this stuff? She was like, you know, I was trying to find me a Caucasian man. Girl, okay, okay, we get that shit. Okay, whatever. So they reminiscing, and Kay brings up Rashida. So what's going on with Rashida? How her store going? I'm, you know, now, Kay, Michelle, let me tell you something. I know you can't stand these bras, and I'm pretty sure they told you to say this stuff, but it would be me. If I don't give a fuck about somebody, I'm not finna ask how they doing and what's going on. Hell no. Nah. Why bring them up, okay? 
fuck that bitch. If you don't like her, fuck her. Why are you bringing it up? You know, that kind of make you look messy. And I know, like, it's just messy looking. Like, girl, don't ask about no damn shit. I know she probably got a K-Michelle voodoo doll. I'm pretty sure of it. And I'm always right. Okay, we don't care. You know, we really don't care about Rashida. And we really don't care about this beef y'all still got. Then you bring up Mimi. Mimi got a girlfriend now. Oh, Mimi got a girl. Damn, Nico, that fucked her up that bad that she had to go switch to the click. You know, and then... Here come Carly talking about the beef between, oh, excuse me, her and Jocelyn and the stuff that's going on and how, you know, that really hurt. The last time I seen Jocelyn, she hit me in the face with some flowers, okay? And then I had called her up, called her up and she hung up right in my face. Like, bitch, you know, we catch flights out here. We don't catch feelings. But she was just about to cry, bitch. I don't want to be sad. I don't want to be, girl, whatever, whatever. That, I don't know, I guess that scene was just to reintroduce Kate Michelle on the small number of episodes that she's going to be on this season, you know, which to me it still was kind of pointless, but it was nice seeing Kate on the screen, but, you know, they could have kept that. Then we get this shit where Tiara, she goes up to um meet with uh, Scrap, and she was like, you know what, the girls were telling me maybe the way to get to the, all this situation is to talk to um Karen, and that's probably the... They was right. So that's what she trying to do. Talk to Scrap about what's going on and have a sit down with um Karen and all this stuff. And, you know, I just kind of zoned out of that conversation because it's the same damn thing. Like, he he's scared to talk to his mama about Tiara. She using the child, even if she trying to say that she's not using the child, you are using the child to get what you want. That's basically what it is. And that's fucked up. Okay. Scrap, you a grown ass man. Okay. You are a grown ass man. You are not a little boy. You have got to give up these Omarion. We're going to do this for little Saint Brace out of here. Okay. You're going to have to get them up. Omarion got them, left them alone. That don't mean that you pick them up decade, a decade later. And you take over the torch. You don't do that, okay? You got to cut some things or put it in a ponytail or, you know, style it. You got to do something better than that because you're looking real raggedy, okay? And I'm tired of it. I am tired of it. I gave you props last week about putting some oil sheen in your hair right about now. I'm just tired of it. I'm tired. So, you know, Rashida came up there to meet Scrappy and to, um, you know, talk to him or whatever. She, he basically was like... You know, my beef ain't with you, Rashida, because she was like, you know, once I got that call for Rosewood, I just didn't give a shit about nothing else. Let me tell y'all something. Rashida wants y'all to know that she was on Rosewood, okay? She wants y'all to know that she was on this show that may get canceled, probably won't come back for a season two, and her role will not be uh, repassed, okay? Let me tell you something. Rashida, you was on two scenes in the episode, and you literally was on there for like, 10, 15 seconds. It really wasn't that much. But, I mean, you got to be happy for what you give. You know, she making... The way Rashida keep putting it out there that she went out there to California to film Rosewood was like she was on a whole damn episode and her she got a recurring character, okay? That's how she was making the scene. And, no, okay? But... Rashida want Kurt and him to talk and for Scrappy to come out to his um the showcase and they talk. So, he going to do that. Then here come uh, Scrap De Leon, okay? Come and meet up with Karen. Karen, dial your hair back, okay, baby, because it's not working for me. Um, Karen just don't give a fuck. Karen was like, what's going on? He was like, I need you to sit down and talk to Tiara because right now I can't uh, see my son because of you. She was like, you know, that bitch is manipulative. I don't want to talk to that bitch. That voodoo bitch. I said, oh, she's a voodoo bitch. <laughs> I was like, girl, stop playing. But uh, she's stroking that. Oh, my God. She's stroking that damn cat or dog or whatever the fuck it is in that confessional looking like Dr. Evil. With the I was like, what the hell? She was like, this bitch manipulate. My son tried to put me in jail with her voodoo bitch ass. And I said, okay, girl, we get it. And basically, it ain't no making up. He was like, and Karen said, she trying to use the son against you. That's basically all that she doing. I believe that shit too. And like Karen said, get go to the courts and let the white people figure this shit out. I said, why they got to be white? You, black people can't do it. Ain't no black lawyers and judges and shit. Stop it. But she right. Go to the courts and let them figure that out. Put your ass on visitation because she technically shouldn't be doing that. Just because you won't, she she won't choose you and all this stuff. Girl, get the fuck out of here. But he was like, this is my son. I'm talking about Karen said this shit been going on for years. Okay. 
The son is four years old and she ain't never been to damn one birthday party and she barely have a relationship because she barely get to see him. And then Scrap asked her one more time, um, so for the benefit of my child, you want to um, sit down with her? She said, absolutely not. He got up and pushed that chair back and it fell back. I said, oh, you mad a little mad. You big mad. Okay. He walked out like a tantrum. Okay. He had a little tantrum and walked out the door. He said, why well, I do this fucking shit? I heard everything that he said. Y'all got to get better with this bleeping shit because I'm hearing this shit. And then um, she was like, stupid ass with his weak ass. I said, oh, that's your son though. So, Carly Red said that she got a text or a phone call from Jocelyn out the blue talking about something. She wanted to meet up and talk. And she was like, maybe K. Michelle went and told her what I said because K. Michelle did tell her, you know, Jocelyn don't talk shit about you, but you probably just need to give her some time. So, they meet up and Jocelyn was like, you know, I don't fight no more. I don't do all that stuff. I don't want to get my $200 manicure. I said, $200? Bitch, what? You know me, lean down the street, do it for 20. Okay, what the fuck? But I guess, you know, it is what it is when you get up to a certain, whatever. Girl, I just, 200, that's a waste of money. Okay, and she was like, so what's going on, Kylie? She was like, girl, I thought you was my friend, but you kind of like flipped on me. For real? And the way, <laughs> the way Jocelyn slowly tried to put that straw in her mouth and sip that drink, it was wrecking on Carly Red's nerve. It was getting to her. And Jocelyn knew exactly what the fuck she was doing. Because Carly trying to act like she was unbothered by everything that's going on. She was like, bitch, you know what you did. She was like, you know what? I thought you was my friend, but I thought you was my friend too. She was like, because you out here, you know, uh, they told me, Tommy told me all the stuff that the girls were saying about me and all this shit. And... Carly was like, I'm not saying shit about you. I said, but Carly, you was not stopping them from saying nothing because you was right along with them. And I said, you lying right then and there. And then <laughs> Jocelyn was like, but you know what? When I get this, you know, I got this information. And if you don't want it to put on the blogs and stuff, you need to start gossiping about me. She was like, bitch, I don't give a fuck about what you got, okay? You don't have nothing on me. I don't give a fuck about what you got. <laughs> Jocelyn, the way Carly read face, she was like, I said, girl, calm down. Bitch, you oh, you ain't got to have a stroke and everything. You know, you in that age limit. Stop that. Jocelyn looked at her like, <laughs> you okay? <laughs> you all right? <laughs> when she did it like that, the shit made me laugh because Jocelyn really looked like she wanted to bust out laughing because it was too damn fun. I said, where is all this coming from? She was like, bitch, you ain't got shit holding over my head. And she was like, oh, okay. And I'm just sitting here like, this was whack. Okay, this episode went all that. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. And I'm going to go look at Black and Crew. Peace, y'all.